Hello and welcome back to another episode of Transport Fever 2. We're here in Brookshire County uh, coming into Houston and in this video we'll be going around the map and updating slash upgrading all of the lines and industries that we haven't seen in quite a while since we're now starting to transition from horses to uh, steam vehicles especially for roads and we're also starting to get better trains and boats coming in as well. And so this video is mostly going to be uh, updating bus lines, upgrading vehicles on other lines that are still using horses, and we're not really going to be setting up much new things, or at least in terms of large production chains. Uh, we might make a few connections across the map if we can make it feasible, but for the most part, we're going to be focusing on cities, making sure things are optimized there, all of our lines, uh, for example, everything going on over here. We're still using plenty of horses, but I think we're getting to the point where we can start to transition to some of the steam vehicles that we've unlocked, or even diesel. I forget uh, which ones we have, but we'll be upgrading these across the map, uh, overall improving our efficiency and moving forward uh, past horses. And so let's start off here with our Houston fuel line and we'll start with these horses. We'll jump right in and see what it would be like to replace these. We see we have all these steam flatbed trucks unlocked and we do have this uh, one diesel truck unlocked but I think we're going to go with uh, the steam trucks because they have slightly more capacity and we're not really in any position where power is needed, so I think we'll stick for oil to these steam flatbed trucks. This will give us a greatly improved top speed. I believe they'll go about four miles an hour faster now. And so here we can see what those look like driving along this dirt road towards uh, our oil wells out here. We'll just uh, have to come back and double check all of our line rates once we're finished upgrading, but we'll also upgrade these horses going into Houston. We'll pretty much do the same thing, and we'll choose the uh, the tarpaulin trucks since that's covered, and that would probably make more sense for something coming into the city. Uh, there wouldn't really be much open cargo driving through the streets of a city. And so I believe that's all for uh, our trucks on our fuel line. One thing I do want to make sure is that this small country road is still good enough uh, with the top speed, which it is. We can see our trucks reaching their top speed of 16 miles an hour. Uh, I believe the top speed is 19, or 25 actually, so we probably don't have to worry about top speed for a while. But now we need to check in on our line rates. So let's come to Houston, and we can see the city is requesting 140 for fuel. Uh, I'm almost positive that we're no longer reaching all of the fuel with this one stop. However, it looks like we are pretty close, although we might want to move this. As much as I don't want to put it on this main road here, uh, looks like we might do well on this road here right along the river, which we'll place this down as soon as we get the money. We'll just speed this up. Uh, and then we'll pretty much just replace this one here. And so we now have this new stop placed. Uh, it's still connected to the fuel line, and it covers all of the fuel needed in Houston. So we can double check here. 143 is uh, the rate that we're looking for. It looks like our updated trucks are able to handle 167, which I'm actually okay with because... The city is going to start growing over here, and that's still in uh, the catchment area of our truck stop here. So that leaves us some room to grow. Uh, we don't need to always be behind on this line. So I suppose we'll aim to even out uh, around 165, 170, wherever we end up with all of our other vehicles. And so obviously the next step is checking in on our boats that are bringing the oil or the fuel into uh, Houston. So if we take a look at that rate, that's just under 300, which is still actually pretty good. If we divide that by two, 
That's about 150. So maybe we get one more ship. See where that gets us to. Uh, it looks like we might not have the money for it just yet. There we go. That gets us up to 340. Uh, if we divide that by two, that's 170, which is almost exactly matching this truck line. So I'm okay keeping that there. And then the next line we need to keep an eye out for is this one here, our oil to fuel line. And I believe this one's just fine as it's at a rate of 211, but that's after uh, it gets reduced here. So these three ships should still do just fine. Uh, if anything, they'll make us a bit more money as they travel uh, slightly more full. And then the last line we need to check here is this crude oil line, which this seems to be way over what we need it to be now, uh, I believe. So if we take our rate of 170 and multiply that by 2, that gets us to 340. So that's the rate that we're going to aim for here. Of course, it's okay if we go over because overproducing isn't much of an issue. Uh, we still get the money for delivering all of that oil. But we don't really want to go completely overboard and just overproduce everything as much as possible. So maybe we sell one more vehicle and we'll be okay with that number. So that gets us to 380. That's about 40 units higher than what we want, but that's okay as it helps account for any sort of uh, irregularities along the line. And so now we can see here all of our new steam trucks uh, driving around very busy, delivering and picking up their resources. I'm pretty happy with this. I'm not sure if we're quite ready to expand this oil well. I think I want to wait until we're supplying much more of the map before we expand this oil well and then sort of flesh this area out a bit more. Uh, but I think it's pretty good for where we're at right now. And then I think the same applies for our oil refinery here and our fuel refinery farther up the road. I think once we start, uh, or I guess next time we upgrade this line, uh, we'll actually come through and start to uh, upgrade the surrounding areas just to match the production level that it's going through. And while we're here in Houston uh, planning on growing it more, I think to help aid this growth we're also going to redo our bus stops. The city has grown considerably down this way and we have a lot of this space that the city is going to end up coming and growing into. So. I think if we tweak these bus stations a little bit to allow for some growth to occur and sort of optimize them a bit more with our uh, residential, commercial, and industry graph here, I think we can start to get a little bit more production out of this whole loop. And so just taking a look at this, I don't think that there's too much that I want to change. Uh, I think we might move this one up a street so it's a little bit more central to these commercial buildings. And then we'll build another stop either down here or on this side of the river, which can start to uh, feed our industrial areas. Uh, the tricky part is uh, that we're getting to the point where we might want to start thinking about breaking this up uh, instead of one loop, maybe having lines or maybe a smaller loop that's a little bit more direct between these three areas and then one that comes up to our train station. I think what we're going to do is pretty much start from scratch. So we'll delete all of these and we'll keep this one up here as that's obviously for our train station. We'll come in here, grab our uh, bus slash tram stops and we'll build this one more up in this area. So yeah, we'll just move this stop up a street and then if we come back into uh, this graph, I think we'll move this stop to this street. If we get rid of this, it looks like this covers most of this side of uh, our main street there. And then I think we'll just get one here as this seems to cover all of our industry. The only thing I don't really like about this is it is right next to our truck stop. And 
it looks like that actually automatically deleted it. And so it looks like we only have one or the other, so let's maybe keep the truck stop where it was and then we'll put our bus stops. Uh, I guess we can put it on the other side of the street here. That's still pretty close to everything and we still cover all of our industry. And then I do think we're going to keep um, a stop up here and this is going to be sort of what we did in Pittsburgh where this is going to be more or less a shuttle line straight to our uh, our train station here just so that it allows people to easily get out of the heart of the city straight to the train station so they don't have to follow an entire loop just to get up there. And so now I believe with that done we can come through clear out all of these lines and we'll reset this up so it looks like starting at 2nd Street here We'll come here, down, and just like that. That looks good. And then we'll fix this up in the opposite direction. So now this line is going in the opposite direction. And then lastly, we'll come down to our road depot here. And it looks like we're still dealing with horses for the most part when it comes to buses. There is a little bit of a factor with power on some of these, but I still think uh, using these horses are just fine. So then we'll buy, let's go with eight of these just to make sure we cover all the demand. And that will go then from this line up to our passenger stop there. And then we'll also upgrade all of our other buses to the American stagecoaches, just so that those are also sort of uh, up to speed with everything else. It's not too much of a difference, just a little bit of uh, speed and a, one more capacity, I believe. So as soon as we get the money, we'll upgrade this and we should be done with Houston. And so we can see here, Houston is quickly beginning to grow. We can see here in the charts, it continues to go up. So that's exciting to see. Uh, we can now move on to some other areas. Uh, let's just check all of our lines and make sure nothing's going too crazy. Uh, looks like our machines line here is losing us a lot of money, but that will slowly even out over time. And I don't think anything looks too crazy here, just a few vehicles that pop up every now and then just because they have a little bit of an irregular cycle, but nothing else really sticks out too much. Uh, and on the other end of things, all these boat lines look really good as well as some of our trains so we obviously won't be touching any of those in this video but we can now move on to our next area that I want to upgrade which is a lot of these farms in this area uh, as well as our boat line here I think we might be able to finally upgrade these boats to something a bit uh, higher capacity so we can get uh, just a little bit more money out of these boats. And so again, let's start from the end of this line and sort of work our way back. And we can see there's definitely room here in Portland for us to deliver some more food. And then over here in Salt Lake City, uh, again, we're covering most of this actually in Salt Lake City. So there might not be too much more for us to change here, but we will come and take a look at it uh, but looking at these numbers, it looks like we'll probably want around 300 total food coming out of this food processing plant. Uh, we can see we're sitting right about 250, which is pretty good, uh, just not quite where we want it just yet. And so to start out with that, we're going to come here and we're actually going to separate this line into or this station into two separate stations because we've had some issues of some traffic jams forming here just due to the amount of trucks coming in. So I think we're going to build a station over here for this port which is where the grain will get dropped off. And then I think we can keep this one for strictly food. Uh, we won't do too much with it but we will get in here and detail this and we'll be back once these stations are separated and the trucks are all upgraded.
All right, now we have our uh, newly created uh, food area just outside of Portland. Uh, so we have our grain drop off here and then our food pickup here. And those lines are completely separated as they come in from different sides here. And they shouldn't get cut off too much by the train since it is pretty infrequent. So that should have minimal effect on uh, the overall effectiveness of these lines. And so before we come in and start adjusting line rates and everything, let's make sure Portland is getting food delivered to everywhere it needs it. And it looks like our stop is right here, which does seem to cover everything besides maybe two or three buildings here. So I'm not too worried about covering all of that. Uh, we can see it is getting almost all the food. There is a little room to grow there. Uh, so let's just double check this line rate. 163 I think is pretty good to leave this at. Uh, we might actually just sell one vehicle. Maybe just to get us a little closer so our trucks aren't running sort of half empty. Or partially empty occasionally. Uh, it looks like this line has been hit or miss depending on the consistency of... Uh, our ships, but hopefully upgrading these ships and getting much more food coming in and out of this area uh, should help alleviate that. And so while we're still in this area, one thing we want to do is make sure we're not uh, uh, doing too much with this one line. So our rate is currently at 404, and this farm can only output a maximum of 400. So I think we're actually right at the sweet point when it comes to balancing this line rate. I think 405 is just good enough to where most of our trucks will leave with a full load and then occasionally one or two might leave with five out of six resources. So I think that's a pretty good balance to have. We do have a lot of vehicles on here, so maybe selling one might get us exactly to 400. Although it looks like that gets us just under, so we'll actually just duplicate that and leave that at 405. Uh, but mainly what we're going to want to do now is get this uh, rate higher. So because we determined we want about 300 food coming out of here, that means we need 600 grain coming in. And so we already determined that uh, we're producing the max amount at this farm. So 400 is coming out of this port, which means 200 should be coming out of this farm, which if we check this line rate, we're uh, just sort of under producing on that end of it. Uh, we will want this to be up at 200, if not higher, just to give us a bit of a cushion. And hopefully we can easily achieve that by upgrading these trucks to uh, these newer ones. We will actually sell maybe 10 of them to help fund this since we are running a little tight on money. We'll do that and then hopefully soon we'll get some sort of shipment in that will allow us to purchase these. And replacing all those trucks gets us up to a line rate of 152. Maybe we'll let this sit for a little bit, let the numbers even out. Uh, that might change. We might have to get a few more trucks going here. Uh, I thought just upgrading them with a little less vehicles should do the trick, but maybe it just needs an update. And so getting us actually over uh, the amount of vehicles we had before gets us up to a line rate of 220, which again I'm okay with. Uh, I'd rather be a little over than a little under as uh, that still allows us to move things back and forth. So eventually we'll see this number ramp up, but of course we're still limited by our ships here. So I think this is going to have to sort of be a steady upgrade uh, where we sort of grab maybe one or two of these and we start to think about replacing them. So I believe we're running this boat here, the Rigi, which has a top speed of 16 miles an hour and a capacity of 7 or 70. And it looks like the one that we'll want to replace it with is this Dunara Castle ship, as this has a capacity of 100. Uh, it has the same top speed, 
However, uh, the increased capacity should help us get a higher rate through here. Although, after thinking about it, I really don't think it's worth the money to upgrade all these ships when I think it's still effective for us to just duplicate uh, the ships that we currently have. So we'll get this line up to 13 vehicles, which actually gets us to a perfect 400 rate. Uh, and so with three more vehicles, hopefully those will even out along the line. That'll also provide us with a bit more consistency in terms of our deliveries and picking up over here. As a higher frequency will give us uh, just a more consistent income from the line. Uh, instead of one boat coming in, maybe every two or three minutes we get one coming in every 30 to 45 seconds. We can actually take a look at the frequency here. So yeah, every 128 seconds uh, we should be getting a boat coming in or out of the port. So I'm happy with that. Uh, it'll just take a while for these numbers to even out. And then looking on the Salt Lake City end of things, let's just make sure this boat line is good enough. 137, I believe. That's still enough to supply the city. Uh, in terms of the trucks here, we actually don't have enough trucks. So let's sell these and upgrade these ones. And that should get us up to where we need to be. So that gets us up to 129, which is just about exactly how much the city needs. And we'll double check that our truck stops in the right place which it does seem like it is although I think we can do with uh, bringing this road across here and that should help immensely with uh, covering all the industries we need so I believe it's a medium street and it looks like we don't quite have the money to connect that so let's just speed this up until we get that money and now we have just over 3 million. We can build that. That should allow this truck stop to cover everything, but we might actually move this over a block since we didn't have access to this street before. And then we'll also want to build back the bus stop that we had. So that will go right here. And so now that should be everything sorted out here with Salt Lake City. Uh, let's just double check that our rates are still good. This actually went up, but that's fine. We'll leave that uh, up just because the city will grow and fill in those spaces that we demolished. And now I think for the most part, we're pretty much done with this area of the map. That's all these lines updated, these cities. Uh, are all functioning pretty well still so we'll just let everything update on this end we'll come back later and check in on it but we can now move to optimizing and cleaning up some other areas of the map all right so now the next line that we're going to focus on is over here in this sawmill and we're going to be replacing this logs line with a much more efficient uh, train line up the hill so we're gonna actually get to use those geared locomotives that we're gonna use for our machines line and I think those would work really well here uh, bringing logs down to the sawmill and then coming back up the hill to uh, pick up more logs I think this will work out pretty well uh, especially since uh, it's a short distance, so speed isn't really something we need for this distance. Uh, it's mainly power, which we can get with those engines. Uh, we'll just have to rearrange some things. Uh, we'll probably have to straighten up or fix a few things up here so that we can actually get a train station. I would like to keep this truck station and our unload point uh, just so that maybe we can have a supplemental line. Uh, maybe we'll, we will end up having a few trucks bringing logs down by themselves just to handle any sort of overflow or anything else that we would get from this area. Uh, and also just so that we have a bit more consistency in our deliveries to this sawmill. But I think overall uh, we're largely going to replace this line since it doesn't make sense to have almost 100 
trucks going back and forth on something that could easily be done by a train instead. And so getting this to fit in actually shouldn't be too hard. Uh, we will want to get a train station in here, which we might actually be able to fit in pretty easily right here. Let's see if maybe we can get slightly longer. It looks maybe not, but we can always upgrade this later on. Uh, so we'll just get this place right here. We only need one track for now. And luckily what we can do is extend the platforms out this end just so that we can afford to have a slightly larger train come through here. We'll extend that out and then see if maybe we can get a few cargo buildings. Or actually this will be fine for now. I think maybe later on once it makes sense we can get a few more cargo buildings out here. But let's first make sure that the terrain fits. So we'll just raise it up a bit and then smooth it out so that this platform just isn't up on a random hill. Uh, we'll do that over this end as well. We'll bring all this up and then we'll smooth it out. And then the last thing we pretty much need to do is add a second set of tracks down here. So we'll add this in just like so. And I believe we do need a platform on this side for it to function. So we can get that in there. We could also actually extend this a bit more, but we'll see what we can do with just this. Uh, and then all we should need to do is grab this line here. And let's see what we would get if we were to just simply try to connect this up. It looks like it doesn't really want to do that. So let's start up here and we'll start working our way down. And so we have our train line set up here. Uh, it's pretty much as straightforward as we can get. Uh, we come out of this station and follow the road to help us save some money so we weren't cutting in uh, through the land so much. We'll actually smooth this out so that the uh, space between the road and the tracks isn't so jagged. But that looks good there. And then we peel off from the road so that we can get into this station here. And so really all that's left is to build our train with the goal of replacing our current rate of 400 logs coming into this sawmill. And so this is the train that we're going to go with. It is this Climax locomotive uh, with a bunch of flat cars behind it. We can see here its power rating is just fine. It should handle this no problem. And then we will set this up on a line from up here down to the sawmill. And so let's take a quick look at what the rate is for this. So this is at a rate of 171. Uh, we could probably add a couple of cars to this uh, to help it out. So we'll grab some more of these flat car with side stakes. And we'll add maybe three more. It looks like it should still be able to handle that just fine. Uh, we'll just need to wait in order to add that in here. But we'll get three more. That gets us to right around 200. And I think we'll stick with this uh, just one train for now. We'll see if it actually works. Because we don't want it too long or else it won't fit in this station here. Uh, but as long as this can pick up enough logs to make us a good amount of money per trip, I'll be more than happy with that. And then we can start cutting back this truck line here. All right, and so after a little bit of tweaking, uh, we switched out the Climax locomotive with a Heisler engine. Uh, I'm not sure why it's backwards. I couldn't figure out a way to get it flipped around, but I think this looks pretty good. We had, uh, added a couple more cars. This one's a little bit faster, and we should uh, be earning money with this train 
after some careful balancing uh, between the line rate and everything else. And so with that, we can come in here and we can start to sell a couple of these vehicles. So we obviously don't need that 450 line rate. This train is now uh, carrying about 306 line rate for us. So I think we can narrow this down to almost 100 and we will still be operating pretty much just the same. So for the most part, we will sell a lot of these vehicles. I think we'll save maybe 15 and then we'll go from there. Uh, so we'll do that and then we'll upgrade these to our new steam trucks. That gets us up to a line rate of about 81. And then we can just duplicate a couple of these until we get up to uh, the 100-ish to 150 that we need remaining. And so our sawmill should start doing much better. Uh, it's going to take a little bit for consistency and everything to work its way through. I believe our limiting factor is still this train going back and forth, uh, which we had balanced before for uh, this line here to bring 100, 100 tools into Lincoln, which I still think is a good goal, so we'll keep that. Uh, we will, however, uh, delete and upgrade some of these trucks so that uh, it's a little bit faster to get all the way out there. And we'll grab these tarpaulin trucks. I believe we were at a rate of about 100 before, and so we'll stay at that rate of 100 here. All right, and then while we're over here, uh, let's also take a look at our Lincoln train line. As this one's been a little iffy, I've been seeing it pop in and out on our finances chart. You can see here, it might actually even be losing us money over time. However, if we take a look at the stra stations, there's obviously demand for it as we have 200 people waiting in Lincoln almost 200 waiting in Tacoma and our train uh, fully loaded coming out of Lincoln itself and so I think what I want to do is we'll add another vehicle or another car or two to this train and we'll see where we're at and then we might even be able to start thinking about uh, duplicating this and getting a second train going for consistency but let's come in here We'll edit this, and I think we'll add two cars for now. We'll see where that gets us. And so we'll modify this train. Uh, its new capacity is up to 114, which I don't see being a problem at all. We'll just want to make sure it's still able to get up uh, some of these slopes here. It looks like it might slow down a little bit coming into Tacoma, but we can see it actually doesn't, so that's pretty exciting to see. So again, we'll just need to come back and take a look at this and see how that changes our overall finances for this line. As with the more cars and the same top speed, we should really just be getting more money from that. And so while we wait for that train to uh, finish going back and forth so we can get some accurate numbers. Let's take a look at our Pittsburgh to Allentown line and see how things are going here and maybe optimize this one so we can get some more money out of it. So it looks like we have a good amount of people waiting in Pittsburgh uh, and another good handful of people waiting in Allentown. It looks like the bus networks could use some slight upgrades just so it can start to keep up a bit more uh, with this train line. If we take a look here this train's been doing pretty well, but it does dip down occasionally. So this is an instance where maybe we do get a second train because this train is already doing pretty well. Uh, and I think we are pushing its top speed just slightly. Uh, again, we have no issues running this train at all. The only worry I have is on the Pittsburgh end, but Again, this seems to be a case of just simply updating our bus network, uh, especially because Pittsburgh is lacking a little bit, considering it's our largest city on the map so far. So I think we'll upgrade our buses in Pittsburgh and Allentown, 
and then we'll take a look here and maybe decide if we want to get another train going between Pittsburgh and Allentown. And so taking a look at Pittsburgh, it seems like it's grown a lot down into this area and up in this area. We're starting to get some development over on this side of the river, as well as down here right by the train station. So those are exciting to see. I'm not sure if we're going to provide bus services to these just yet until they're a little bit more established communities. But we definitely do need another stop here and maybe a more optimized stop up here. So the best way to go about this might be to start from scratch yet again. So we'll delete these stops. And the shape of Pittsburgh is a little odd. So that also gives us a bit of trouble in figuring out where we want everything to go. And so I think we'll start here. We'll get uh, some stops in this area. And that covers everything up here. Although that will quickly get uh, sort of outdated as the city continues to grow up that way. We'll get another stop here, which again will have much similar problems when the city continues to expand. Uh, we'll get one that sort of comes down here and covers this half of the city. And then we'll have another stop that will come and pretty much exist right where the old one was. Or maybe we could try to get it over here. Although it doesn't look like it will reach across the river anyway. So maybe we will just put it back right here. And that should be a pretty good loop for Pittsburgh. Again, eventually we'll want to stray away from loops as it'll be more inefficient. But I think for now this works good. And I think we'll stick to the same thing of having a sort of shuttle service from this stop to the train station. And that's how we'll end up feeding our train station and so we'll simply just have to grab our existing bus loop we'll start from scratch and bring this around the city and we'll actually want to set up a second one going in the opposite direction since we don't have that yet so we'll grab six more buses and those will go in the opposite direction and then it looks like our shuttle line rerouted automatically so I'm fine with that. We should be good to let this play and things will start to update. Uh, the passengers will have to start to uh, build back up at each stop, but we should start to th see things moving pretty quickly here in Pittsburgh and hopefully see a lot more people coming to this train station. And so while we wait for our buses to go around in Pittsburgh, let's head over to Allentown and see if there's anything we can do here. And so it doesn't seem like there's too much more we can do here in Allentown at the moment. Uh, we will come back at the end of the video and build out a little bit more of the grid here, since Allentown seems to be starting to push its limits on what's already here. The only thing I notice is maybe uh, the bus loops could use a few more buses, but in terms of coverage, everything seems to be covered. So we'll get two more buses this way just so we can help clear out this stop uh, and just for the sake of balance although this will probably lose us money we will also upgrade that bus line and now coming back to Pittsburgh I think just to help out with our bus lines we're gonna move this truck stop off of this street and we'll get that placed right here it should still cover all of the same buildings now unfortunately we have a lot of machines that need delivered here and up here so eventually we will have to sort of break up our uh, drop-off points. But for now, the majority of resources are getting dropped off in this area of Pittsburgh. So that can stay there. And then I think some initial observations here in Pittsburgh. We might want just a few more buses going around each loop. So we'll probably upgrade these to eight in each direction as well. And then the last thing I want to look at is our passenger line here uh, from Houston to Portland. As this one's been one we've been debating for a while on if it's worth it to get a second train going. And I do think that we're very close to that point. 
Uh, I think we might actually take that chance since we see here we are making a ton of money from this train and this line as a whole. And so I think we could probably duplicate this train and see what happens. So let's duplicate that train. That'll get going. I believe it'll go to Portland or not Portland. It'll go to Salt Lake City first and make its way towards Portland, but we will uh, take a look at this before we end the video and make sure things are balanced properly. Uh, we might have to uh, redo some of the bus networks in some of these cities to be able to support and supply that demand since we will have an increased amount of uh, people getting taken from each city. So we'll wanna make sure that we're able to supply that with our own bus networks, but I think for now we'll leave that. Hopefully we'll see everything work out. If anything, the increased frequency will increase demand, which might also help offset the cost of this. But of course only time will tell when it comes to that. So we'll leave that for now. And then we'll head back over to Pittsburgh and see what we can do about that train line out there. And so we're back here in Pittsburgh and everything seems to be doing well, especially with our buses. Besides here at this station, it seems like we have a bit of a backup with our buses. So let's see if maybe we can get a bus stop here. And that is where our shuttle stop to the train station will go. So we'll just simply remove this 11th Street, add that here. And that should uh, handle everything just fine as those two stops are close enough to each other that people that want to get to the train will just walk between those stops and hopefully the traffic won't interfere with each other much anymore uh, so we'll unfortunately have to let that reroute and filter through to see if this does end up working but I have a feeling we'll probably be okay with this and so coming to our train between Allentown and Pittsburgh I think we will duplicate it. Uh, it's a little hard to justify as we're just not seeing the numbers at each station, but this train is making a pretty comfortable profit uh, pretty much every period. So I think what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take one car off the end and then duplicate it. So then that helps even out the numbers a bit more as we go between uh, each station. So we'll modify this and then we'll just simply duplicate that train. And our other train should come out, out here sort of in between, but we'll uh, stop it and even out the trains as time goes on. And hopefully we'll see these numbers uh, stay up at the stations and we can keep both of these trains and just sort of reap the benefits of it. And then the last thing we're gonna do in this video, I think is upgrade our construction materials line here as Allentown is requesting much more uh, construction materials than it has before and this line has not been touched since we first set it up pretty much at the beginning of this series so this one's a pretty simple line as it should just be strictly upgrading all of the resources here so we'll grab this flatbed truck upgrade those that gets us up to a rate of 168, which I'm actually okay with as it being just above what Allentown needs. And we will double check that we're able to supply all those construction materials, which it doesn't seem like we are. So I think we might move that in a bit farther. So we'll pause quick, delete that, and we'll just move it down a street. Uh, there shouldn't be much of an issue there. But then next we'll need to upgrade the boat. And this one, I think we will replace it with this boat and we'll see what rate we get from that. It looks like 138. It's a little bit unbalanced, but I'm okay with that as I'd rather have this ship go back and forth completely full than have two uh, partly full ships that might not even uh, make money off of that and then lastly we have this line here which we will need to duplicate a couple of these 
to get that up to about the 140 that the boat is bringing in. And that should do just fine. Uh, and everything should go well over here. We'll keep an eye on it, uh, but we'll come and check on that later anyway. All right, now we're going to take a look at everything we've done this video. Although it wasn't much in terms of construction, it was a lot in terms of upgrading. So we'll take a look at uh, some of that stuff. And then when we come back, we will talk about future projects as well as coming to some of our cities and just expanding their road networks a little bit. Uh, there's not much, too much in terms of fixing, but we will do some quick expanding with what little money we do have. Uh, so we have all that to look forward to. And so coming back here to Pittsburgh, uh, I want to quickly just set this portion of the city on the right path before we move on from it. And this is going to be a little bit expensive as deleting all these buildings is going to cost us. But it's worth it in the end once things do uh, straighten out. So we'll pretty much just bring this road straight out to here. It's okay if it curves a little bit as it'll have to curve with this mountain anyway. Uh, we'll delete this road and then we'll sort of straighten up this whole area out to here. Uh, again, we want to leave enough space between the river and the road so that buildings can still spawn in, but they're not uh, sort of limited by any of that. And then we'll pretty much do the same thing here. We'll drag this road out uh, following the base of the mountain. And that'll come pretty much to here. And the rest of it's pretty much just building out the grid. So we'll do this. We'll bring out a little bit of this street so that we can get some buildings by the river. We'll do the same thing here. And I think that'll be good enough for this area. We'll lock all these streets so the city doesn't do anything too crazy. And I believe that'll mostly be it for Pittsburgh. Uh, of course, eventually we will want to build out this area. Uh, this area is still getting filled in, but for now, I think Pittsburgh is doing just fine. Next, we have Allentown, which is definitely the one that's in the most need at the moment. So we need to set some of these streets straight. Uh, looks like that needs to be deleted, all this, and then we can come back in with our streets and build these out. So Allentown now has a nice extension to its road network. 
Uh, I think this will serve it for quite a while. Uh, I'm excited to see it fill in down towards the river here, but I think there's pretty much just one more city we want to look at, and that's all the way over here in Salt Lake City. Although, we've been do looking at this a lot, so there's not too much we need to do here. Uh, I think we're just pretty much going to clean up these roads a bit, and then that's going to be all. So we'll build a road there, and then we can extend this road. We'll try to straighten it up with our main road here. So something like that. As soon as we get the money, we'll build that, but... Uh, and then I think that'll pretty much be it for our Salt Lake City adjustments. And so let's now take a look at uh, the lines that we've upgraded in this video and see how those are doing. So if we come in here to Houston, it looks like it's largely receiving all the f fuel it needs. Uh, if we take a look here, this line is doing pretty well. It makes us a profit occasionally, but it looks like it's been doing pretty well since we upgraded. It's not quite as consistent as it used to be. And so we might actually want to sell some of these just to help keep that more consistent so that it's not leaving with uh, half empty amounts of fuel. Although it doesn't look like there's really a lack of fuel here. So I'm not sure why those numbers are fluctuating so much. But it looks like for the most part we're earning a profit, so nothing to really worry about there. Taking a look at the rest of the line, if we take a look at our crude oil line, that has been doing very well. Uh, just basically more money since we've upgraded it. These ships here, these are doing, again, a little bit better since then. These boats should have improved probably the most since we're now making the most use out of them. But you can see a slight bump here when we upgraded those. And as for our food processing plant, we're now producing over 300 food. Although, we're not shipping the full 300. But it looks like our boats here are doing pretty well since the upgrade. Uh, same with our Salt Lake City food. It looks like that line has been maxed out and much more consistent since we upgraded. All these truck lines seem to be doing much better with their higher top speed and higher capacity. Uh, taking a look here, again everything looks good with these. So hopefully now that we're starting to get uh, better trucks we'll start to see a much better distinction at which lines are actually good and which lines are bad since now we can start to earn some considerable money with trucks. And so the last line we want to take a look at for our trucks is this construction materials line, which, although only a recent upgrade, seems to be doing much better now that we've upgraded all those vehicles. You can see here it was a little iffy, but uh, way more money coming out of this line since then. And so now pretty much all that's left to take a look at is some of our more recent additions to our trains. So here... Let's take a look at the line as a whole. Now hopefully everything is filtered out here and the numbers are starting to be a little more accurate. But initial impressions show that this line is going to do very well. Uh, we just had both of these trains stop and that looks like much more money than what we've had before. Uh, let's see if this train left full. So this one did not leave full and that's what I was worried about but as long as it stays close to full, we should be fine. And we're actually uh, not picking up all the demand that we need. So let's get two more buses going to the train station. Hopefully we don't end up backing up at this stop. That's really the only limiting factor here with bringing people to the train station. But I think two more buses should be fine to pick up these people. Looking at the Allentown end of things, uh, the bus lines here seem to be okay, and the train station itself seems to be doing pretty good. It looks like this train that left out, out of Allentown was mostly full. And then we have our train lines out of Lincoln that we should take a look at. 
So our new log train going up and down the mountain here uh, looks to be doing pretty good. It's very consistent in terms of its money earning potential, uh, although not much. It is, I'd say, about 200000 maybe 150000 uh, But as long as it's earning us money, there's not really any issue there. And the trucks that are supporting it are doing just as well as the train. So maybe there is more to do with this train here. Obviously, once we get more powerful trains, uh, it'll be a no-brainer that it's easier to use trains instead of trucks. Or maybe the trucks will get a large enough capacity where it makes sense to have maybe only 5 to 15 trucks going back and forth. But that won't be for a long time. And then lastly, we have the train that we wanted to duplicate but didn't quite pull the trigger on. Uh, we might do that in the next video since uh, we can take a look here and see this train's doing pretty well. Uh, I'm sure if we get a second train that'll only help boost things as we have tons of people waiting in Lincoln and Tacoma. So I'm sure uh, we'll have no issues there with this train later on. And then finally we have our big money maker that we've been banking on doing well. Uh, it looks like initial reactions that it's doing pretty okay. It did lose money here, but that could have been a weird hiccup. Uh, if we take a look at Salt Lake City here, it looks like we should get a full load of people going uh, back and forth. However, our train coming out of Portland isn't full, and that's a little bit concerning, as we will definitely want to get more people going there. Although we never came and upgraded this bus line so let's just get 10 vehicles in each direction here and that should greatly uh, improve how many people were able to move around the city of Portland itself so maybe it's just a bus thing and we weren't getting enough buses going through but initial reactions to this line are very good with uh, duplicating the train and that'll only earn us more money as time goes on. And so as for future projects, I think next video we're finally setting up this tool line and then that provides us with a good opportunity to have a sort of trade route up the river for construction materials since we do need construction materials in a few cities down here, Salt Lake City and Houston. Uh, the tools can supply uh, Salt Lake City and Houston as well. And then, although it might not make sense, we can take food from our farms down here back up to Allentown so that we don't have much time with an empty boat moving construction materials back and forth. And I think that should be pretty efficient. Although we could just bring food from here, uh, financially it wouldn't make sense to do that. So that'll probably be something we add in uh, next video, if not the one after that since we do want to start moving some of these higher end resources across the map uh, since it wouldn't make sense to have multiple machines factories across the map just due to how resource intensive that whole process is but if we can start to get some of those sort of large lines across the map set up uh, we can start to reuse those for other resources and so with that, that's going to be all for this video. So if you enjoyed this episode, please like and subscribe. If you have any suggestions or feedback, leave a comment below. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.